morning, right sir. Yes. And it's a delight to wish everyone happy Father's Day. Um, Pastor Martin put it so beautifully, everyone who exemplifies God's fatherhood, uh, we celebrate you and we bless you. And uh, we know that you will continue to uh, exhibit God in every area of your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'd like us to, uh, to take time and just praise God together. Let's bless his name. Think about all the good things he has done for you and praise him for you. Praise him for this. We praise your excellent name, Father. Please feel free to unmute and lift your voice to him. Unmute your voice and lift your voices. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Jesus. I honor you, Lord. Father, thank you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. I give you praise. I give you honor. I give you adoration. I adore you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We magnify your wonderful name. My fortune. Yes, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We deliverer. We praise. We praise. We praise. We praise. We praise your wonderful name. We faithful. bless your name. For your faithfulness. Thank you, Father. We extol you, you, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. We magnify you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you are the Father of Fathers. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Our great help. You are our Father in heaven. We thank you so much. Great go, Legema, the Rado Shishere, Randor, Dosis, and the Prosenet. Prete de Kitoko do Goron, Doroshi, Kere, Bari, 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 there is no God like you, the praise you, Lord, the fountain of life. unto you, all worship is due, all thanks to the appreciation yes all accolades are due you you are bigger better ah you are stronger greater than us all that is within me, bless your holy name, Lord. I bless you with my mind, with my spirit, with my soul. I bless you with my body, every cell of my being. I bless you. I exalt you. I worship you. I promote you. I magnify you, Lord, for you are God, my God. You, Lord. We thank you, Father. There is no Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. You are living. Hallelujah. We, we praise you. Yeah, we honor you, Lord. You feed us. You clothe us. Hallelujah. You, you, are the Lord. you defend us. You heal us. You deliver us. You fight for us. You, you decorate us. You, you lift us up. Oh, you share yourself with us. Praise all limitations from us. Oh, we share eternal life with you. 
your nature, your spirit. Oh, we have, we are, we have your all-knowing spirit within us. Le karia dorotoy do kusisi sa predoba the all mighty spirit of god we living in us we bless you we praise you lord we adore you we magnify your holy name father we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you lord we thank you lord like we are a husband to widows, a father to the orphans, the help of the needy, the lifter of our heads. We praise you, our closest friend. We praise you, our victorious king. We praise you. We praise you, Holy Name Father. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. May we give the clap offering to the Lord Jesus as we praise him. He is awesome. He is beautiful. Always the same. We bless your holy name, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. The, the, those of you who had a, 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 a week, the week was a struggle for you. Uh, you. You're receiving strength from God, and this week will be much better in the name of Jesus. Amen? Yeah, this week will be much better. Um, those of you who uh, have gone through experience any un unpleasantness uh, we we are speaking to those situations to be reversed in the name of Jesus I'll that for Carol. hallelujah and for speak me. speak to those situations to be reversed and you will enjoy this coming week uh, 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 with the abundance of God's peace in the name of Jesus, amen? amen. Hallelujah, I'm so excited. On Tuesday, was it Tuesday or Friday? It was Friday. God showed me something. Uh, somebody had a bruise on the, the side of the face. Uh, I don't know. Hey, nice to have you, Mr. Coombs. Are you home today? Are you back at home? Yes, That's yes, awesome. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Welcome home. Thank you very much. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, there's something about the word of God that when it is coming to us, when you are hearing, whether collect, you know, in a group as we are in church or privately, the moment the word of God, you hear it, you receive what is offering you instantly. You do not need to go to prayers about it. Amen? Amen? Uh, God wants us to learn to and to continue uh, in uh, uh, receiving as his word comes, as it's coming to you, is delivering the need, delivering the answer to the need in, in, in your life. It's, it's coming with answers. It's coming with life and encouragement, enablement. So when God's word, you hear it anywhere you are, anytime, just know that the, the living God, your father, our father, just showed up to hand you uh, the key to what you he knows you need. Amen? Sometimes he goes ahead of us and then he gives us things or prepare us uh, waiting for the need to arise. So some of these things, uh, they don't make sense instantly, uh, but you keep them in your heart 
And as you keep keeping them in your heart, you're going to discover that as you turn the bend or turn the corner, you're going to see, oh, wow, this was what he saw. And then he, he equipped me with, with so and so. So learning to receive God's word directly is amazing. We, we have to be careful not to want to pray for everything. Mm -hmm. I know some, some, some people might jump at that and say, that is the pastor who says we shouldn't pray about everything. All right. But don't, I don't want, we, for those who want to misunderstand, anything you say will be misunderstood anyway. But when, if you're looking for your keys, if you were looking for your car keys, and all of a sudden, somebody tells you, oh, your car keys are on the desk. Are you still going to go to God and pray that you go, to, you'll be able to get to the desk? Mm -hmm. the, the, to, to, I mean, is there any sense in that? Mm -hmm. No, you just take it. You take it and go with it. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you come with me to the book of First John, please? First John uh, chapter 3. First John chapter 3. And let us look at it from verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. As we put a comma there, I want to welcome everyone who is worshiping with us for the first time, I think. And I want you to know that it's a delight to have you. And for those who are not, here for the first time is always a joy to see and fellowship with you. Amen. Behold, behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth, knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when, we shall, when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Thinking about Father's Day and asking the Lord how and appreciating God for our great fathers, you know, uh, fathers to be, young sons and, you know, married or married and grandfathers, great grandfathers. You know, I, I was so um, overwhelmed with joy and excitement uh, at the beauty of God's creation, how he would, um, how he equipped the fathers how he has taken time to equip the fathers and the huge responsibility he has committed to the fathers. And I looked at it and I said, wow, what an honor to be a father. To be a father means you are sharing uh, in the responsibility of our heavenly father. When you have a great person, every successful person has a mentor, I hope. I hope nobody succeeds on his own. Yes, I haven't seen one who has succeeded on his own. And, and when I look at the, 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 the men in our lives, our brothers and sisters, the men, the fathers, and then I realize, okay, they are as good and so blessed. And they are being a blessing because of the role model in their lives. And this role model is none other than the living God himself. Amen. He said here, look, imagine, or just say, ponder over the kind of love the Father has given to us, has conferred, the word bestowed means to confer. To confer means to uh, uh, to to delegate, to uh, pass something from one to another. You can confer authority. You can confer a position of honor to someone. He say, behold, 
ponder over the degree, the quality, the quality, and as well as the quantity of love the Father has conferred on us that we should be called the sons of God. Amen. The sons of God. That alone, I don't know how, how we see it, but every time I come across where it says, I, I, the scripture addresses God as my father or addresses me as his son, I mean, if we can just, maybe we can take one day and break it down and, and see how unpack this, what this term father really means. A father, what he's saying is, you have, you belong to me in the system or the nature of things that God has created. Everything has a source. Only God has no source. Amen. Everything has a source. A woman. All right. The woman came from a man. A man came from God, a human came from uh, what we call humus, the earth, the, the, the living black earth, am I right? It's a humus, right? So that's where we, we, everything comes from, a chicken came from an egg or an egg came from a chicken, either way they both taste good. But you know, everything has a source and God is saying, I am your source. I am your source. I am your beginning. I am your end. I am your strength. I am your wealth. I am your destination. I'm your companion. Amen. To be a father means you can identify yourself with him. You, you are not complete until you are married. I use the term married, you are joined to him and you take on his name. Amen. Come on, amen. That's why the Bible says in the book of Corinthians, it says when a man prays or prophesies and covers his head, to, uh, to, in other words, you, you shroud your head, you dishonor God. So you know, in every sense where a man, a human being, a male figure, or even a, a woman stands up to do anything to pray or declare, there they must be an exposure of who your head is. You have to refer and defer and promote and exhibit your head. He says, what kind of love is this that the Father has conferred upon us in that we are now, the adopted sons are called the sons of God. Amen. And he says, therefore, the world does not acknowledge, approve, or recognize us. Why? Why not? Because this same world does not know he's talking about. It's not talking about the planet. It's not talking about the globe. It's not talking about trees and animals. And he's talking, when he talks about the world, he's talking about the system that is controlled by the devil. Amen. He's talking about the the worldly sinful system that is controlled by the devil. He said that system does not refuse to acknowledge, recognize, and accord the Lord Jesus his due rights. They refuse. That the system refuse. And because the system refuse, that system also refuses uh, to know the sons of this king. Amen. But now look at verse 2 where the joy is. Now, before we even get to verse two, can we just, can we just touch a few things, please? Allow me to unpack. I don't want to rush it. It's better I stop halfway than to rush it, all right? Come with me to the book of Ephesians, please. Let's look at the book of Ephesians chapter three, verse 17 to 19. The first person there could help us today, amen? First person there could help us today. Ephesians chapter three, verse 19, uh, verse 7, 17 to 19. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by yeah. faith, yeah. that you being rooted and grounded in love mm -hmm. may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth 
and length and depth and height mm -hmm. and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Yes. That you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Verse one says, what kind of love? The quality and the quantity. And Paul went on to describe this love. He said, this love is surpassing knowledge. It is a love that you cannot know with thoroughly. In other words, with, 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 your, with your human ability, it's not, it's not, it's not discernible. It is, you cannot exhaust, you cannot study it, you cannot, you, the more of it you experience, the more there is to experience, amen? With this kind of love is a love that the, Paul says, he say, and to know, the, the word to know there is not talking about head knowledge, it's talking about experience, experiential knowledge, to experience the love of God that passes knowledge. In other words, you can never exhaust the field of this love. You can drain it all. You can mine it all. You cannot exhaust it. Exhaust it. He said, it's the know the love of God that passes knowledge. And then you will be filled with the fullness of God. That is a, still a scratch. He said, what manner of love is this that the Father has? It's, it's, it's just like you're swimming in an everlasting uh, 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 ocean, an ocean of love that is so wide that you can't even see the other side and you keep swimming and keep swimming. Paul said that love is the love that passes knowledge, is surpassing knowledge. Romans 8.35, if you may come over there, Romans 8.35, let's look at it together and let's see what, what, what the scriptures has. Uh, to say about this love again. It says, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? So is the kind of love. Remember, he says to behold. Every, every time you read the Bible and you hear, in the, especially King James Version, when he says behold, it means ponder carefully or observe. All right? It's the same word that you find that they say sila. All right? Sila. In, uh, in, in, in the Hebrew term that in the book, you find that in, in the book of Psalms a lot. So now, what, what kind of love is that? Man, what, what, what an amazing love. What, what great love. What, what, what is this kind of love that the Father just dumped on us or dropped us into? A notion that we can't touch the bottom of it. We can reach the ends of it. Now, that kind of love is the one that Paul also described in his letter to the Romans here. He says in verse 35, can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble? Because so many Christians say, oh, if God really loves me, he's not going to let me pass through this, especially we Westerners, we, we think that it, when we go through any hardship, it is because God does not love us. Amen. Come on. Amen. And then we, we also, we Christians, start to say, ah, maybe what are you doing wrong that you are going through difficulties? We try to make people feel, you know, unintentionally, we make people feel like they are sinners. Do you know? that plantain tastes better when fried. And can you ask plantain how much he enjoys being dropped into a frying, a frying pan with boiling oil? So can you imagine if your life has no hardship, you would be lacking experience. Yeah, I mentioned plantain. Anybody frying it this afternoon, I'm coming for lunch. But you see, the, 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 the issue is there are some things that you cannot enjoy fully unless you have gone through seasons. See, the fundamental thing that we must keep at the back of our minds is 
before you were born, he loved you. Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, anybody? Please read it for me. It said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. So before you were formed in your mother's womb, before you showed up on the money to the blip, they say, oh, there, there is a baby. And they could scan the mother's womb. Is that ultrasound they call it? All right. You see, and then they see the baby, uh, you know, moving like a tiny worm or tiny, you know, little thing. God loved you. He loved you. At that time, you couldn't say yea or nay. You have not committed any sin on your own. You only inherited what mom and dad carried. You know what I'm saying? You were not able to give a tithe. You were not able to give an offering. You were not able to lay hands on anybody. You were not able to quote a, a verse of scripture. In other words, he loved you when you couldn't even earn or do anything bad or good on your own. So in other words, what it tells me is the kind of love that he's talking about here is not the love that you earn. Amen. It said, before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you. Before I formed you, God was speaking to Jeremiah. And this is the same thing for us in Ephesians. He says the same thing. He said, I've loved you before the foundations of the world. Amen. He loved us. He provided salvation for us before he created the world. So Paul, Paul said here, he said, is it when we go through trouble or calamity? Uh, when we are persecuted, he said, what about hunger? Or when we are destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scripture says, for your sakes, for your sake, Paul is the one saying now, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. No, despite all these things, Paul said, overwhelming victory is ours through what? Through Jesus Christ. What does it say? Overwhelming victory is ours through who? Through Jesus Christ. Who does what? Who loved us. Can we say it together? Who loved us? Can we say it together? Who loved us? Overwhelming victory is ours through Jesus Christ. Who loved us? Now verse 38 says, and I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries for tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from the love of God. Can you see the question, the, the statement that Peter made? Oh, what kind of love is this? What kind of love? In spite, I, I denied Jesus. When he was being crucified, he still loved me. He restored me. I abandoned uh, being a disciple. I went back to my job and he followed after me and he called me back and gave me back my apostleship. And he loved Peter. Peter, Peter, remember what he went through. Remember what he went through. Peter, Peter was many of us, you know, Say yes to today when danger, when something doesn't go right, we are shaky and we change us, you know. You say, what kind of love? How can you, how could you possibly love me or love us so lavishly? And now Paul picked it up. He said, when you go through trouble, it doesn't mean he doesn't love you. When there's hunger, and your credit card doesn't work, when the door is slammed shut on your face, it doesn't mean God does not love you. When you face danger of any type, any kind, when things head south, it doesn't mean if things head south, if things head south, it does not mean that God has his love for you has waned. He loved you when you were, my own language will say, my, my own terms will say, when you were a nobody. And in fact, you think you are somebody, you cannot be somebody other than the person he has made you become. Amen. Come on, amen. It's, that is the kind of love we have. Hallelujah. Verse 39, I'd like us to look at it. 
It says no power in the sky above or in the earth be below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. This is amazing. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave. He loved you, the world that he gave. And what did he give? He gave Jesus. So Jesus is God's expression of love. Amen. Hallelujah. That he gave his only begotten son. The gift of God is life. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. All right? So the gift of God's love is life. Why? Because the need of a man, of humanity, was death. It was life. That was the need. The predicament that the man was in was the predicament of death, eternal death. So God provided the right response directly opposite what the situation was. There was death. God so loved the world, he offered life. That is what fathers do. Fathers inject life. Amen. Fathers come in to inject life. When he's talking about sons of God here, that we may be called the sons of God, we are the begotten of God. Amen? We are, it's, sorry, Christ is the begotten of God. We are the adopted ones. Amen? We are the adopted ones. We were adopted uh, into the family. Let me just, let's look at those scriptures, please, if you don't mind. Romans 8 again. Come with me to Romans 8, verse 15. Let's look at it. What does it say here in verse 15? It is amazing. Uh, when you, the whole, the entire Romans chapter 8 seemed to me like somebody just giving you, writing out the, the, the constitution. It says here, it's also you've not received the spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you receive God's spirit when he adopted you as his own. Amen. Can I say something here? I don't think any one of us here that I can see was adopted. All right. I don't think any one of us here was adopted that I can see so far. But if you, those who are adopted are actually, they can understand this verse better because, you know, what happens is you see, you see, you understand that you were not given to your parents. Your parents chose you. They filled forms. They thought about you. They examined you. Yet they took the risk. For us, you know, ours were, we were totally dead, non responsive to God. It was the love of God that came into the regions of death, into the regions of sin, and infused, was injected, and created a brand new us. And it is that love that pulled us out of the swamp of sin nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you, if you want to see another place to back that up, Galatians, Chapter 4, if you come with me, you're going to see it. Uh, Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. Amen. Galatians chapter 4, verse 5. What does he say here? He says, God sent him to buy freedom for us. Talking about Christ. For us who were slaves to the law. Woo, hallelujah. So that. He could adopt us. Uh, so there's nothing about you that God does not know. He knows all the tendencies you, you have, all your struggles. He knew all these things, saw all those things before he chose you. Amen. He was not blindfolded. It, was, it wasn't a blind date God had with you. All right. He chose you. 
He says so that he could what? Adopt us as his very own children. Isn't that amazing? That's a, that's a love. What manner of love the Father has given to us that we may be called children of God. Now, let me <clears throat> pull it together here. And I say something here that the Spirit of God wants me to say. Um, when we talk about love, we talk about giving. Love is associated, if you love me, you do this for me. If you love me, you die. Am I right? That is true. Love is action. Love is work. Love is a choice. Amen? Not a feeling. Love is a choice, not a feeling. Hallelujah. Ask a married person, he will tell you, love is a choice, not a feeling. Because the feeling sometimes lasts for just two years, three years. The bills come in the way. Life happens. Kids come. Other responsibilities. And, the, to, to, and come right on top of the feeling, the responses, and the irresponsibility. They refuse out to respond, the reciprocities. When there is no given and taking, no given and receiving from the object of love, then there is no feeling. But now it comes to a point where you got to make up your mind and say, yeah, it's a decision I made. So the, and that, those periods, uh, when the makeup is washed away, you know, and the suit is removed, and what you thought was a six pack is just a lump, you know, and all the wrinkles starts to show. Love remains a choice. Amen. Bible did not say we were so attractive, and God was passing by, and then uh, 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 he 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 fell in love with us. No. He chose, in fact, let me, let me put you, there is no attract, attraction in death. Death is not attractive. Yet the Bible says, while we were dead in our trespasses and sins, Christ died for us. So he invested himself for things that were totally dead. Amen. Come on, amen. Now, I'd like you to come with me to the book of Hebrews, and let's see. We talk about love and talk about doing this for, giving this, giving that. Um, what about spanking? What about discipline? What about the pulling by the ear or the shaking of the forefinger, a stern warning? What about the pulling back, yanking you from the front and keeping you behind. What about the discipline, irrespective of how it is uh, administered? What about the discipline? Come to book of Hebrews, please. Come with me to the book of Hebrews and let us look at chapter 12, all right? And then we pick it from verse three. It said, think, of all the hostility he endured. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of God is, is I believe the Spirit of God is fixing a family um, you are together but loosely attached amen loosely attached uh, they come and go at will there is no cohesion there is no harmony uh, I don't know who you are but the spirit of God is is walking into that situation and I, I like you if, if you are if you know the head or if you happen to be a member of that family please invite the use your own mouth to uh, invite the holy spirit in holy spirit please yeah come on you are welcoming in other words give him room 
and let him and let him uh, let him work. Let him do what he came for. Uh, the, the, the God wants to bring uh, harmony, oneness. Amen. Verse three says, "Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up." Now he says here, after all. You have not yet given your lives in your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging words God spoke to you as his children? As his children, he said, my son, don't make light of the Lord's discipline and don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. Uh oh that doesn't look like the loving, doting father that we like to talk about, right? That's kind of different from, where is the Father Christmas? This doesn't look like Father Christmas. This one came with a whip. Sometimes he shows up with a whip, with a frown, and he's coming to make sure that the boy, now it's time for you to begin to grow into a, 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 a a man that the girl now can grow into the woman, right? So now there are responsibilities and expectations set. What about the hugs and the kisses? What about the, the lavishing of, oh, if I need this, I swipe my faith like a card, a card, right? Card, faith is like, you know, I swipe it and there's no way it can fail. The Bible says it cannot fail. It is true. Your faith can never fail you. If your faith is hinged on the living word of God that you put into practice, you activate through your obedience. But when the source of that faith comes in with discipline, many people in, in the body of Christ do not like correction. And when you do not like correction, you are not showing a sign of wanting to, to work with God. The Bible says the one that he loves, he corrects. Amen. I was still going to say happy, happy Father's Day to God after I finish. Happy Father's Day to God. Amen. But, but he disciplines. He disciplines. God is a disciplinarian. He does not discipline out of selfishness he disciplines out of love every correction every shouting every pulling back every telling you to wait every every time he 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 everything that we think are demonic oh he would say oh i want to bind the devil now can i say something we gotta learn uh, as the body of christ to differentiate when god is at work and when the devil is at work, not everything that you that displeases you is satanic. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. God is not the owner of Walmart. He owns things bigger than that. He owns the owner of Walmart. <laughs> amen. He's not the Father Christmas coming from the North Pole. So every time he comes, he comes with blessings. Sometimes he shows up with corrections. He shows up, why, why does he? Let's, let's continue here. As you've endured this divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Verse seven is what I, I'm reading now. Who ever heard of a child who is never disciplined by its father. If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his children, it means that you are illegitimate, illegitimate and are not really his children at all. Uh-oh, I wonder where the hug went. I wonder where the kisses went. I wonder where the open doors went. I wonder where the blessings went. I wonder what all the, because the church has given us a picture of a different God, the God that everything is yes. 
and everything is now, and every, if you have faith, the church has given us a picture of a false God who pampers, who is cuddly, who is fluffy, not the king of kings, not the judge of the world, not the father who wants not just to have babies, remain babies. Amen. You know, we, we had a, when we had our puppy, when it was, we got, oh my goodness, it was so cute. It was the cutest puppy. Cute, 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 cute. Would jump and lick your hands and jump on you and cuddle and and then the puppy des decided to grow without our permission. And now the, the puppy wants, still wants to cuddle and still wants to do the things he used to do before, uh, especially when you are well dressed up and you're ready to go out. And now you gotta tell the puppy, no, this is not the time for a hug. You can't jump on the bed anymore. You can't, you can't, you can't. And the puppy is learning. That is why it's easier to buy the Chinese puppy, the one you whine from Amazon. You don't need to feed that one, just charge the batteries, that's all. If God had made us like the one you whine, artificial, God wouldn't have had a lot of things to correct. But no, he made us like himself. And he doesn't grow, but he created room for us to grow. Look at something here. For our earthly fathers, verse 10, disciplines us for a few years, doing the best they know how, they knew how. But God's discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his what? Holiness. Hallelujah. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It's painful. But afterwards, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who retain, uh, who are trained, sorry, in this way. For those who are trained in this way. Now, verse 12 says, so take a new grip with your tired hands and strengthen your weak knees. In other words, see the boy. Amen. Stand right up. Walk, walking with your shoulder, you know, like down because things are not going your way and sucking and talking as if God has abandoned his throne and nothing is going to work. And we go to God crying. There's a certain level in, in, a, in, a, in spiritual walk that when you cry, God will just show up immediately and say, my baby, my baby. And then he gives you room to grow and then you cry and he's not looking your way. He wants you to take the, how do you call that? The little towel, take the paper towel and wipe your face and come, we have work to do. Amen. Come on, amen. Sometimes God disciplines us directly. Every time you look at the scriptures, you're going to leave the scriptures. You're going to close that Bible, walk away with affirmation, edification, comfort, exhortation and correction. There's always gonna be something that you see in the scripture that makes you know, I need to adjust a little bit here. I need to adjust here. I need to, uh, maybe, or maybe it's just me. Maybe you're, you've graduated from that. But every time I look at the scriptures, there's always something. And in fact, there are so many things I can say that I need to adjust. Correction. He says, if I, I correct you because I love you, I discipline you because you are not an illegitimate child. I'm your father. 
In other words, I'm proud of you. I have a future for you. I, ha I have, I have, I can see your future, and I'm not going to sit idly by and watch you miss that future. And it cost me something to reserve that position for you. You are, you are supposed to grow, to reflect me. You gotta get disciplined. You gotta get disciplined. Anybody ever been through hunger because of God's word? Anybody ever? I remember when I got called and I was serving somewhere. I was, I was so, so poor that my, my, my friend, Pastor Ugo, we were together. We were so poor and we suffered to a point where every time I need to visit my sister, visit my father, I will first go to my sister's house and then eat and change clothes. I have to change my wardrobe because if I went the way I came from my station to my father, my father would say, you are not leaving this house. So I needed to go there, spend two weeks of nonstop eating to fill up, you know, and fill up all the, the places that needed to be filled up. Why? Because I need to reflect in a certain way. The discipline of God, his intent is to bring us to reflect him. Amen. Come on, amen. Come on, amen. Nobody's smiling anymore. All right, good. If God does not correct you, then he's not your father. And if he's not your father, that means he's not going to be responsible for you. And if you do not listen to his correction, it, you also say you are not my father. Who are you? You know, those days we say, there's a saying, it takes a village to raise a child, right? Okay. I know now everything is changing. Well, in fact, they're still using, it takes a village now to continue to raise a child. Only that they are not raising the village that is created by the, the worldly system. They are not raising sons and daughters the way God intends them to be. Amen. But every instruction of God, every discipline of God, every correction of God, is intended to make you become more like your father God. Amen. Become more like your father God. It, be, it, it makes you, it, it, he, it, he loves you. In fact, he said, have you ever seen a father, uh, seen a son who, who, who has a father and the father never corrected it? Have you ever seen now, let me say something here. If we talk about correcting our children, which we are eager to do, and we get upset when they don't listen to us, but we struggle to listen to God. Amen. Now, what I have learned, and I'm still learning, is God's fatherhood and leadership and training is exemplified. Amen. He doesn't sit on the throne and say, no, you got to jump. No, no, you didn't do it. Go back, jump again. No, he jumps first, and then he expects you to follow him. He genuflates. He bows. Do you know God bows? Let me, let me put it this way. When I say God bow, he's not bowing to something that is greater than him. No. But for God to listen to you, have a conversation with you, with him, don't you think that is God bowing to your level? Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. Come on. That is God humbling himself to hear you, hear you pray, have a conversation with you. He said, where two or three are gathered together in my name. There I am in their midst. What are we talking about? The king waiting for us to get together. And then he says, as you get together, I, I am there. Look at Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8, please. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. Anyone, please? Hebrews 5, 8. What does it say? It says, 
even though Christ was God's son, he did what? He learned. Can you all say after me? He learned obedience from the things he experienced. Amen. Christ learned obedience from the things he experienced. Amen. He learned obedience from the things he experienced. Hallelujah. He learned obedience from the things he experienced. So in other words, Christ grew. Hello? And in the book of Luke, chapter 2, verse 40, and the child grew and became strong. He was full of wisdom and God's blessing was upon him. Hallelujah. There is growth. God, he says, he say, he became strong. He was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was on him. The grace of God was on him. Let me round up with this and say, that being a father who disciplines, I'm learning over and over and over and over because I'm learning on the job. So maybe mine is taking a little longer, you know, but I have to be and I have to do and I have to act the exact way that my son, I expect him to. Amen. It is fathers that cast the vision for the family. And especially it is fathers that cast visions for the children. Hello? Hello? When fathers, when children lack vision and direction, it is not the mom that should be blamed, that should carry the blame. It is the father. Amen? Amen? Come on, amen. Now, the responsibility on the father is, is, is huge. Do you know that it is impossible for a father to, you know, be available doting over the kids if he wants to succeed? It has to be a choice and, and uh, some kind of balance that requires a lot of skill. I need to go over there to be able to put the roof over, the, over your head. I need to be over there to be able to bring bacon home. I need to be over there to make sure that the needs of the family are met. Yet, I am also needed here to be able to hug, to wipe the tears, to, to encourage, to build up, to edify, to do this and do that. It is, a, 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 how do you call it? It's like walking on a tightrope. And many of our own parents for some of us to be, to turn out the way we are, you know, praise the Lord. They have done an amazing job based on what they had. And I want us to give a clap offering to our fathers. Amen. Whether they are alive or not, we give, we give God thanks for them. They did their best. Now they have, they put us on their shoulders so that we can see further and be able to go beyond where they have been so that now our children can stand on our shoulders and they should go way beyond. The Bible says, and Christ learned obedience and Christ grew through the things he experienced. Amen. All right. So now if Christ experienced those things, then it's an example that he, we are not supposed to sit still and then say, we do that. You go ahead and do that. Now, let me say, speak to some of us who are so uh, stiff when it comes, you know, God is not moved by our emotions. You know that. He's not moved by our emotions. He's moved by our obedience. He says, if you love me, then do what I tell you. Sometimes God may not come to you directly to tell you, I need you to change here and here and here. 
Sometimes it will come to you through your brother in the, fam in the family of faith or your sister in the family of faith. It, it, correction for the family may come. I mean, sometimes in my life, I have, Pastor Merton is here, uh, uh, Pastor Bola is here, uh, uh, and so many other people, uh, so many of you that you have contributed in various ways into my life in, in things. Oh, this is the way to do it. This is the better way to do it. This is the better way to do it. And I, I, I'm learning to suck it in and, you know, like a sponge, you know, absorb it and try to do it. Uh, if you don't see the changes you are expecting instantly, just give me time, you know, give me time. Sometimes uh, an old dog takes a little bit of time to learn a new trick. But I'm not the kind of dog that is late to learn a trick. I know somebody's going to say, call himself a dog. I'm just using a figure of speech. We need to continue to learn new tricks. Amen. We need to continue to exemplify new behaviors because their children are not too old to change, nor too young to learn. We need to continue to exemplify just like Christ learned obedience. No wonder when Peter his son, John, James, his disciples. Uh, when I say Peter, his son, I'm talking about spiritual son now. So nobody says, is Christ, was Christ married? You know, when the people, his disciples saw him and the other disciples whose names are not mentioned, no wonder they were able to leave and make such huge sacrifices. Amen. So many of us are standing on the verge of what we know, yes, I, I have God enough to escape hell, but I don't need too much for him to run my life. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So in other words, you have decided the extent to which you want to walk with God. Can I tell you something? You might be surprised that at the end of time, because having Jesus as Savior and not having him as Lord means nothing to him. It cannot be, it's, it's not just a Savior. He wants to be your savior as well as your Lord. Amen. If he saves you and you don't let him be your Lord, at the end of time, he doesn't recognize you. That is why in the book of Matthew, he says, many shall come to me and say, didn't I do this in your name? Didn't I prophesy in your name? Didn't I do miracles and signs in your name? He'll say, well, uh, by the way, what's your name again? What did you say your name was? I don't know you. I, I, have I met you before? What kind of can you, I don't even want to imagine the horror when he, if, if he can, I mean, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to even go there. Hallelujah. Christ wants you to be. A son and a daughter. Amen. Christ is Christian faith. We don't decide. I was fixing breakfast for the family this morning when this, this word came to me. When you follow God, your will is no longer yours. You don't have a will. When you follow God, you don't have a will of your own. Your will is supposed to become, is supposed to become God's will. It must be the same as God's will. Amen. You let go of your rights. That's why when I see Christians, you know, try to defend themselves. Oh, it's my right. How can he do? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You gave up your rights to the one who gave his life for you. You don't have rights. You remember what Jesus said to Peter? He said, when you were a baby, you do this. But when you were old, you shall be led in a way that you that you will be led to go to routes that you were, you wouldn't choose to go to when he was talking about the kind of way peter was going to die to glorify his name amen and peter took it up willingly we got to learn to surrender to the, to the lord amen our god is the giver of himself and everything he has but much more than that he is he doesn't want to spoil us with things. He wants above all things. God wants to see his character perfectly reflecting from you and from me. Amen. Amen. So that when you stand up somewhere 
and they will say, and God showed up on our street because of the identical nature. Hallelujah. How do you feel when your sons and daughters do something nice and, you know, show their skills? I feel, I feel, I hear the lady say, and that is my son, and that's my daughter. You know, many times, and we beat her chest like this. And when I see my son, I say, okay, I think this is what she felt when, you know, I, we are learning. We are learning. Can I ask us a question here before I pray? How many of us have actively gone out to win a friend to Christ in the last month? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many of us actively take time to pray for one another? Pray for the body of Christ. Amen. Thank you so much. You inspire me. Yes, we, it is, it is, this is the family lifestyle. In our family here, as of this time, we, 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 we have to wake, when we wake up in the morning, we, we feed the family and then feed our extended family of cats and dogs and, and all the things that accompany them. You know what I'm saying? You, so it's a responsibility that we do together. And as a Christian, there are things. Do you know one thing? So it is easier to give an offering to God than, amen, than to actually make available your time to go and serve. You know that? You know that? Yeah. While, and I, I, and I give God thanks for the kind of uh, church family we have. We're very generous. Praise the Lord. But you know, God also wants you to step up to begin to do because you, that is where you cultivate and develop his character. Amen. The character is developed through the experience of the doing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I said I wasn't going to stay long today, so let me keep my word. Have I stayed long? All right. Praise God. The Lord will help us. Amen. And the Lord will continue to uh, discipline us. And as he disciplines you, please repent immediately. Whenever God brings something that you don't, it needs you to change. Don't wait for tomorrow. Make that adjustment right where you are. Uh, uh -huh. Make the adjustment right where you are. Can I, can I just uh, finish with this? The spirit of God just drop it in my heart. Second, Cor Second Corinthians chapter 5. Verse, eight, verse 17 and 18. He says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All right? Old things are passed away. Let me, ref let me reform that. If any man is in the word of God, the word is Christ too. You know that. Okay. If anyone is in the family of God, he's a new creation. The old lifestyle, moral values, the old way of living, the systems that governed us and we yielded to. The old is gone. Behold, the new has come. Verse 18 says, and all things are of God. So the new character God wants you to start to develop right now is a responsive uh, 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 style of life to his indictings, to his prunings to his nudges to his instructions to his blinks when he blinks at you you understand and you make adjustment you respond accordingly when he speaks to you you respond it, it, accordingly it, tithing giving praying fasting evangelism uh, ministry living a life of boldness declaring who you are in christ letting your friends know where you stand when it comes to the issue of faith. These are fundamentals for Christians to uh, 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 exhibit. Amen. I don't want to start the second service now. Heavenly Father, we give you praise. We magnify your holy name. Thank you for loving us. Oh, what manner of love is this that the Father has given unto us that we are now called the children of God. Ah, and like your word says, 
We are children of God right now, not tomorrow. We are joyful that we are your sons and daughters. We are honored to be your sons and daughters. We are excited to be your son. We are privileged to be your sons and daughters. And because we are sons, we are sons. Because we are sons, we enjoy your authority in the name of Jesus. Stuffy, stop. Stuff, stuffy head or stuffing, stuffy, stuffiness and headache, stuffiness and headache, anyone? Uh, we enjoy your authority and, 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 and we receive healing. We receive deliverance. We receive the blessings. We receive the favor. We receive your love. We receive everything that you have brought and you keep bringing to us. But more importantly, above all this, we receive your correction because we desire to be. Uh, second time I'm hearing that someone, someone, I don't know whether it is, a, is that a business or something you desire that didn't work out the way you wanted it to work out. If you, if you can let me know quickly, I will appreciate that. Let me know quickly. Somebody attempted something and didn't work. Is it? You is it? I don't know whether, but you you went for something and it didn't work out. All right. It, let me know. So, Father, we desire to have your uh, your character built into us. Help us, Lord, especially men in the house. I'm going to pray for all every male in the house this morning. And Heavenly Father, you have been the best father we can ever. In fact. We couldn't even dream that much, that, that good. Thank you for making, for allowing us to be your sons and daughters. You have exemplified to us what it means to be a father. So help us to be true sons to you, as well as reflect your fatherhood to our loved ones. Help us to be men, husbands, that meet your picture of what a husband should be to our wives and to be a, a father to our children in the name of Jesus. I release grace to every male in the house that the old is gone, the yelling is gone, the withdrawals are gone, the lack of movement be gone. The, the lack of vision be gone. I speak ability, eagerness, willingness. I speak courage. I speak joy and peace, comfort, strength, might, wisdom, knowledge, grace to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We praise your holy name, Lord. We magnify your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just give God thanks together just in a minute? Let's just thank the Lord together. Thank him for being your father. Thank him for being, giving you the privilege to be his son and daughter. Now are we sons of God. He says, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. So all that we are experiencing now cannot compare to what is going to happen when we see him face to face. And the scripture says that we shall be like him when we see him face to face. We praise you. We praise your holy name. We praise you. I prophesy life for it is written that we shall live and we shall not die. I speak life to everyone here. I speak life to everything that we lay our hands to do in the name of Jesus. I, I come against the cloud of, of confusion and discouragement that rests upon us, from some of us from time to time. I command that to leave in the name of Jesus and receive the joy of God. Receive the peace of God. Jesus said, my peace give I unto you, not as the world gives. I, re I release the peace of God to you in the name of Jesus. I declare 
that we are fruitful. We have dominion and we bring things under control. And most importantly, we are fathers and mothers, just the way our father is. We praise you. We glorify your holy name, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 God wants me to ask you, is there anyone here that wants to rededicate his life to God? Anyone? Anyone wanting to make an adjustment? All we need is just, just show your hand and I pray. Yeah, thank you. Any other person? Want to rededicate your life to God? As you are making your adjustments within your heart, you are saying, yes, I think I need a change here. I need to be more open to the Lord. Anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else? I can't see everybody. If you're online, I, I can't. So let us do anybody else. Praise God. Heavenly Father, I, we, can we join our faith, to, faith together, please? And, and let's agree for, with our brother. Hallelujah. 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 I know you are praying in your heart already, sir. And as you are praying and rededicating your heart to the Lord, he is hearing you. And we are joining you. And I am joining you, rededicating my heart to the Lord too. And I ask you, Heavenly Father, that you would help me. Anybody given to anger, you see that anger, you get upset and it takes you, you, you are struggling in that area. Can you please identify? Identify if you anger, anger, you get angry and, and you are struggling in that area. Heavenly Father, we agree with our brother and I join him to both of us, we dedicate our lives to you that we will live the way we have seen you live, that your character will fully be made manifest through us and in us. In the name of Jesus, I speak joy to my brother. I speak the peace of God. I speak the joy of God. I speak the peace of God. I speak contentment to God, direction to, to my brother in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we, we do not just accept you as our Savior. <clears throat> you are also our Lord and we praise you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for the time and uh, the blessing of God rests upon you. Yeah, another person, another person, you say things and then you say, no, I shouldn't have said that. You keep kicking yourself. <clears throat> Any changes? <clears throat> if you can indicate, we can, the grace of God will be released to you to help you win. Amen. You say some things and then, okay, thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Anybody else? Anger? Anger? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Anybody else? I'm going to pray. I'm just trying to follow the Spirit of God as He's leading me. Anybody else? There is also lying. There is also lying. There's nothing to be ashamed of. All right. So you're going to add that too. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you hear me well? Everyone can hear me well, I, I suppose. Yes. Yes. So there's also lying that we need to change from. All right. So I'm going to pray. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Anybody else? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, uh, I, I, I think the Spirit of God is moving. I, I am 
I am in several places right now, uh, and and uh, and uh, hmm. <coughs> Maria. Yes, Pastor. Um, you gotta call me. <laughs> 